Are you a retail or institutional investor interested in Bitcoin mining companies? The Miner Mag brings you free data and analysis from all major NASDAQ listed Bitcoin mining operations to know who stands out. Check out visualized metrics and data dependent stories at theminermag.com. Welcome back to the Mining Pod. We have Anthony Power once again joining us for our monthly mining stock update. Uh, of course, we have a written version of this, which you can find on the compassmining.io website. Go to the articles tab. It's the first one on there. We're going over June's numbers. We'll bleed into July a little bit because it's mid-month and there's a lot of share price numbers that we can go over. Most mining stocks are up well over triple digit percentages, which is awesome. So we're going to go through all that information and more. But first, Anthony, welcome back to the show. Hi, Will. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Yeah, so a lot of action over the June months. Again, for new listeners who are new or not familiar, Miners put out monthly updates almost every month. Sometimes they take a little bit to get to us because they're doing their counting and whatnot. And so we typically do a podcast mid-month, the month after those numbers are released, so we can go through them. So, of course, we're going through June. We have about 15 plus or minus one or two Miners that uh, are on this document, which again, you can find in the article itself. We're going to go over the summary, the highlights for these miners, and then some questions that we got from Twitter beforehand. Uh, but we'll start off just handing it over to you, Anthony. Give us the high level summary for the month of June. What are some things you saw uh, for like the general metrics you keep track of? Um, in, in terms of, of uh, Bitcoin mining, we, we saw the um, the revenues drop in, in June compared to, to May. And this was the transaction fees um, that they were achieving um, through the ordinal um, tr uh, 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 transactions back in, back in that first two weeks of May. Those seem to have, have died down a little bit now. So we're getting normal transaction fees of just over 6.25 uh, Bitcoin uh, per block. Um, there was a difficulty increase, averaged about three cents throughout the month. Um, and so all the miners, <clears throat> um, especially, those that did, especially those that didn't in increase any hash rate, had a, had a drop of sort of between 12, 15 percent for the for the for the month. Um, Marathon came out as as as, as a top miner mining uh, 979 Bitcoin. Um, not as good as the previous month where they where they had over 1,200 Bitcoin. So they they they, they come down um, you know quite a bit. And you know if you look at what their you know mine per exa hash uh, during the month of June, you'll see that's dropped down to sort of 55. Point three, um, the expectation is it was 78, 78 per per uh, exahash was the sort of the 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 the, uh, the expected output for miners. Um, Bit bombs achieved seventy seven, so they, they were nearly you know one hundred percent of of output um, from from the expectation. Uh, closely followed by um, high blockchain and Iris Energy. From an increased perspective, we can we notice that um, that Terra Wolf. Um, got to their 5.5 x hash during the month of June, and um, got there. And also, uh, Cipher Energy increased their their hash rate from six to six point seven. Um, but a lot of these miners, you know, in the month, of, those especially those that are based in Texas, have had to curtail their their energy. And and we've noticed that. And 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 if you look at, across all the miners, the, the the Texas based ones, their output was significantly lower than those miners that are, are based in, in sort of like in, in Canada or some of the other states um, in, in North America. Um, so in Texas itself, during their months of like June, July, August, September, a lot of the miners sign up to the uh, 4CP and, and they, they, it's, it's the program that, you know, you switch off your energy for certain times of the day when the demand is high. And um, for doing that, you'll get some sort of um, a reward back and so a lot of these miners were curtailing during the month. Um, one thing I will say, Riot, who had a, from a production point of view, had a very poor month and, and you know, mined 460 Bitcoin uh, with their, you know, 10.7 exahash. And, you know, if you compare that to like CleanSpark, who only had 6.7 exahash and they, were, they mined 549, you think straight away that that's a really poor month. But when you start reading through their update, Right, blockchain received ten million dollars in uh, in energy credits and power sales, and so you know when you sort of look at 
that amount and convert that back into say Bitcoin, that's an extra 361 Bitcoin added to their total if they were to convert it back. So, you know, in all my metrics of the month, right would have come out top in both utilization and from uh, Bitcoin produced per exash. So, um, and, and a couple of other miners also benefited from the full CP. Um, Cypher received credits back and Iris Energy also received, I think Iris received 600,000 in energy credits and had a good month in production as well. So um, we'll see that occurring over the next over the next uh, few updates now for some of these miners. But then you compare that to, say, Terra Wolf and Clean Spot, who don't mine in in uh, Texas, um, and their figures are, ge- are you know are generally very very good. I mean, Terra Wolf can literally they have something like a ninety eight percent up rate. They they don't have to switch their machines off. I mean, they have you know, part of their um, the hash rate is is supported by nuclear power, and that's twenty four seven. And the power that is generated, electricity power that's generated for the rest of their hash rate is, uh, is, is, is you know, there's no sort of like uh, timings that they have to curtail the energy. It's only if they, if they wish to, you know, switch, switch down voluntarily. So they, they can pretty much use it 24 seven and please spark again, you know, always in them sort of top three or four positions in, in both metrics again, show that, you know, being in certain states does have its advantage. Um, you know, Texas is, is great at welcoming the miners, but there are some there are some issues with the weather, and it's not just the summer months. You've got the winter months. They've got two extremes of weather, so the winter can be really bad in Texas as well. And so when the winter's bad, you know, energy usage increases, and you've got the same issues there. But uh, but across the board, we saw we saw a day on day you know drop um, because of the points I've raised already. Awesome! Thanks for raising all those. Let's go talk about mining stocks for a second. So give me a moment while I raise a new graphic for those watching on YouTube. For those just listening along, what we're sharing here is, again, some of the stuff from the article. And then this is just a graphic from Seeking Alpha, which stock screener. You can sort of see here, this is maybe not the best representation, but all these mining stocks are doing incredibly well with some up over 400% year to date. And that's compared to some of the better stocks out there that you could have purchased like nvidia bitcoin like you raised before the conversation anthony is up about 80 percent year to date which is awesome on bitcoin uh, but if you're owning a mining stock you're doing even better and this just kind of follows up on the whole idea about bitcoin mining stocks where they're a high bid at play on top of bitcoin if bitcoin goes down mining stocks are going to go down even more if bitcoin goes up mining stocks are going to go up even more aggressively it seems to be how the market foresees this so i want to get some comments on a few things from you one uh, generally, how do you see these buying stocks? Who are the winners and losers from what you forecasted? Were there any losers? And then two, how do financial markets sort of look at these monthly updates or the quarterly updates for these miners and forecast that into uh, the revenues or the share prices, I should say, that we're seeing here? Yeah, so um, with regards to, to, to your first point, I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. We know we, we, we've seen this proxy investment for Bitcoin do really well in 2023. We saw the opposite that in at the end of 2021 and the whole of 2022 when these stocks came down significantly more than they've increased this year. And from my table, that's in your in 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 the in the article. Um, you know, those miners there went up an average of about 389 year to date and about 82% in the last month. Now what was was start was started to see in these last sort of last couple of months is that, you know, we're not not 100% seeing a correlation with with the Bitcoin price. You know, some the Bitcoin price has actually been fairly fairly flat for about a month now, but we've seen mining stocks do really well. Um, I'm still getting uncertainty as, as to whether the market actually knows how to price some of these mining stocks. Um, you know, from a uh, from a valuation perspective. Um, so you know, you're going to see some some stocks that have done really some stocks that have done really well, and you know. Um, Compared to compared to other stocks that you know that, that have got significantly say more hash rate, um, less debt, so you know, I would I would you know, there's there's so many factors to bear in mind. I mean, with with mining stocks, you've got the energy price, so that's quite key. So if we look at energy for these miners, you've got the likes of um, Cipher Mining and Wolf. They've got two of the lowest energy prices. You've got um, another metric is the having the best miners, the most efficient miners. And so three of the of the miners that spring to mind will be Marathon Digital, Riot, 
platforms and clean spot as having the largest element of the highest efficient miners. And these are the sort of like, you know, the um, S, uh, SJ19 XPs, um, you know, the really most efficient miners. And, and we've just seen the likes of uh, Riot in the last month. They just ordered 32,000 micro BT miners to give them an extra 7.6x ash, which will be installed over the sort of next 10, 11 months. So by June 2024, they'll have reached uh, their target of 20 exahash. And they've got, on top of that, they've got another 15 exahash of miners that they can purchase at the same price they just paid now. They've just got a really good deal. I think, I think it's $21.50 um, a terahash, which is which is, which is is a good a good price for those at the, mo at, at, at the moment in time. Bear in mind, 18 months ago, some of the miners in that table were paying $80, $90 a terahash for less efficient machines than Riot have just purchased. So, um, so yeah, we've got, we've got low... Low cost energy, we want the most efficient miners, and we want companies who've got sort of enough cash to get them through the runway through the halving. So we've talked about the halving before, where the rewards will literally half overnight sometime in April next year. So at the moment, miners get 6.25 um, Bitcoin per block. That will go down to 3.125 Bitcoin per block. But the costs that the might to mine that Bitcoin don't don't change, so effectively your costs become twice twice as much as as the rewards, and um, so it's important that miners get prepared for that. So you know, try and get the best energy they, they can have at the moment. Try and get the most efficient miners um, hashing, and have some cash on the sidelines to get them through that runway because. We've seen in previous cycles, the Bitcoin price doesn't necessarily increase when the halving happens straight away. It might do, say, four, five, six months later. You've got to be able to manage that four, five, six months. Um, what we will see happen, I mean, difficulty might might actually reduce because the less efficient miners, and might not just, these miners don't represent the whole of the of Bitcoin mining around the world, but the less efficient miners out there will have to switch off when the halving occurs because it won't be profitable to mine. And that means, you know, for some of them, their energy costs themselves might be might be higher than the rewards. And so there's literally no contribution towards any of the other costs. So you'll see miners switch off, which will bring the difficulty down. So those that are able to manage with those efficient, cheap energy miners will then be able to benefit by going through the halving, getting more Bitcoin because the difficulties drop, so therefore they're getting more rewards for what they mine. And then when the price increases, so then they're they're already set up, then ready and running, and, and getting the benefits of that there. Awesome! Thanks for the overview. So one thing I want to jump into here is specific to this graphic, and again for listeners, uh, we're looking at a graphic of share price increases over the last thirty days, with Terrawolf being a leader at 120, 128 percent increase over the last thirty days. The lowest being, uh, I believe that's Bit Digital or. BTBT, yeah. Some of these, uh, some of these ticker names get me bit, sometimes. Bit digital is BCB, yeah. Bit digital at eighteen percent. Bitcoin's up twenty four percent over the last thirty days. So of course everyone's basically up. The question here is who goes up and why. And traditionally we've seen the bigger market caps like Marathon Digital or Riot do really well. Uh, those have just historically been probably miners that funds are interested in investing in or someone who's not super familiar with Bitcoin uh, might know about those companies just because they've been listed for so long. But we're starting to see some of these other players do pretty well as well. Do you think this next cycle we could see some others break out of that, right? Where like a clean spark or a Terra Wolf or a Hive or a Hut Ape is able to break out and sort of get into that same pack with the Marathon Digitals and Riots, which historically have been favored so long by investors? Yeah, I mean, I mean, We've had this discussion about Riot and Marathon many times, and you know that they're the first two to um, be approved to go onto the Nasdaq, list on the Nasdaq, and got all that initial investment, which gave them a head start against the rest of their peer group. Retail investors like Marathon Digital and Riot platforms; they, they just they, they like the stock, even though sometimes their performance doesn't warrant where where they are. You know, you've got some of the other miners. You mentioned CleanSpot. You know, we've talked about Iris Energy. We talked about you know uh, uh, Terrawolf coming on as as I would say Terrawolf is a, is a relatively new miner, 
and, and has had an enormous amount of momentum this year. Um, yes, they've got quite a bit of debt on their balance sheet, but their share price, um, you know, the share price uh, year to date for Terra Wolf um, is is up significantly, um, and uh, what's that, what that will enable them to do. Um, it, I, and this is not, I don't, you know, I can't speak for the company, but, you know, most of these companies have got um, at the market offerings um, with regards to share dilutions. And that basically means that the shareholders in previously have approved some of these companies to sell shares on a daily basis, to raise funds, to pay for growth, to pay for operational expenses. Um, TerraWolf did have a dilution about three or four months ago. And uh, it was, it, you know, it was, you know, Highly, highly advertised out there to shareholders at a very low price. Actually, I think it's like um, I think it's, remember right, it's about a dollar a share. Total share price has actually increased quite steadily since then because you know I think that if the company can show what they're doing with the money and using it to invest right, to buy more machines, to increase the hash rate, to get good growth, to um, have really good energy costs. Terra Wolf ticked the box for all those. So, you know, we've seen a lot of retail interest in Terra Wolf. I don't know about the institutional in interest. Um, you know, we still see the likes of the big the big funds still going after Marathon Digital and, and Riot. We saw that, you know, last week with 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 um um BlackRock and and I think Fidelity got significant um and Vanguard, sorry, but significant percentage of, of shares in both those companies. Um but the retail investors, they're always looking for the next miner. And, and, and you know, I look at the likes of Clean Spark, I look at Iris Energy, I look at Terra Wolf. Um, they're the ones that are sort of like come onto the, onto the scene in the last couple of years. And they may have been mining longer, but they've started to sort of like hit everyone's, um, you know, hit everyone's uh, uh, screens now and starting to see more and more information about them. Um, they're very good at getting their information out there. There's a lot of updates from these miners. Uh, you don't have to really start asking questions. Most of them are quite happy to put updates out at least once a month, and and will put you know additional um, social media updates as well. So most of these miners are on Twitter, and they'll update there, um, and they're quite active. But yeah, um, but we look at a, a market cap at the moment. I think right platforms at you know over three point three billion marathon. Di uh, marathon digital just under 3 billion cypher cypher's come from nowhere and, and they've got a market cap of well over a billion at the moment and they've got a hash rate lower than clean spa so going back to my do i think the markets know how to value I, i'm not 100 sure I, I can't i you know if i was like looking at what clean spark have got looking at what cypher have got there i'd be saying cypher's a um Clean Spark has certainly got, you know, it's, it's certainly turning into a bigger miner, um, but the but the market cap is probably sixty percent of Cipher's market cap, and I, and I can't answer that question. I don't know why. I know Cipher probably got probably got a slightly cheaper energy cost at the moment, and energy is going to be important. So energy, if you think about the energy during the harvest, we've already spoke about it. Energy will double every harvest. So if you get those cheap energy prices, maybe the market's factoring that in there. But I don't think it's significant. I think the gross margin for uh, Cypher is around about seven, six, late 60s, getting up for 70%. And the margin for Clean Spark is around just under 60%, something like that. So it's not a, mass, not a massive difference. But 10, 10 11%, you know, could be something that, that warrants a difference in market cap. But we've already seen, um, you know, even during the month of uh, July, uh, Clean Spark have increased their hash rate to over 8x hash a second. And that's going to get to 10 in a matter of a few more weeks and 16 by the end of the year. And Cypher at the moment, I think they're aiming for about 7.7 7 .7 by the end of the year. So CleanSpark are going to be double the size of Cypher in the next six months. So will their market cap reflect that? And as I say, we've seen all these companies go up 400% since the start of the year. So the market caps have increased significantly. But I think there's a few companies out there the likes of Clean Spark, the likes of Iris Energy. Um, Terra Wolf has had a great run. So Terra Wolf today is the same value as Clean Spark, market capitalization. And and then that, you know, I, I again, 
Telf has got 114 million dollars of debt on the balance sheet, whereas Clean Spark has 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 got a fraction of that. You know, I think 20, 20, 30 million. Um, so, you know, I'd highlight it. You know, I, I can't I can't say what the market's going to do, but you know, I look at things from a fundamental perspective. Um, and you know, if I was suggesting, you know, which share prices have got more to go, Clean Spark would certainly be there. Iris Energy would certainly be there um, of those. Um, I think some of the other ones have had have had a have had a good run for where they are. I mean, Hut Tate have had a great have had a great few months from a share perspective, but from a production perspective, they've had so many issues at you know Drumheller, and they've had issues with um, the energy provider in Ontario. They've got this heart, uh, this uh, sorry, this merger coming up with their USBTC. That's going to give the the new company about seven and a half extra hash of self mining with additional hosted miners as well. But Hut's market cap at the moment is about eight hundred and fifty million, and so that's that's like doubled in, in in the last few months. Probably since that agreement to to merge. I don't know what the impacts of their of their market cap has on that merger because it was fifty fifty. And I don't know what the valuation of USBTC as it as that as that company increased at the same rate. Is there some questions to be asked there? They're doing all the paperwork at the moment, so it's all going through for um, SEC approval at the moment. And um, they can't say anything more than that. I know lots of shelves have been trying to ask Sue many questions of how it's going, but they'll give updates out as and when. And um, also, they want to, you know, get the approval to go to shareholders. And once to go to shareholders, you're looking at about another thirty days before the merger will occur then. So as soon as the shareholders um, start receiving their information about voting the merger, you've got about a month before the merger happens if it's successful. But I don't know about the valuations. If you have DTC, you know, if their if their um valuations increase by that much, it sounds everything sounds okay. But Hutt's had a really good run in the last just in this last sort of few months. And 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 it's not related to production because their their production's been, you know, it's been very, very poor. Um, they finished bottom of the tables for the last three or four months at least now. And even before that, they, they were sort of like that bottom third of miners. So, you know, going back to your question about how the, how the market's valuing these shares, um, I'm not 100% sure how, how it's been done. And I, I know Hook was a favorite stock two years ago. Um, same with High Blockchain two years ago. Um, Riot and Mara have, have, have been in that that group for over two years. Argo blockchain was a favorite two years ago. Now it's Clean Spark, it's Iris Energy, it's TerraWall. Those are the names that have been mentioned now. You're always going to have the Maras and the Riots in that, in that bracket as well, the, the two big. Um, but those are the three, are sort of like the new miners coming through. Um, Cypher's done really well. Cypher's done really well. Um, another miner I don't look at the moment is uh, BitDeer. So BitDeer was a, a recent SPAC. And we know what happened to SPAC, you know, back in 2021, 2022, uh, a lot of them went to the wall. But that one seems to have come through really well. And and they've got a, a, a market um, cap probably close to, I think, one and a half billion. And um, again, with a very, something like four or five exahash of self-mining. So, you know, a company that's valued at one and a half billion, that has like half the hash rate of CleanSpark, that has half the market capital. So you tell me, Will. Lots going on here. Lots to discuss. Uh, been flipping through some charts on the YouTube version of this as we've been going through it. And the thing I've been thinking about is how much do these markets think about Bitcoin production, Bitcoin sold, some of the things that Bitcoiners care about versus just seeing revenue lines. And that's a question I want to throw back to you is maybe even going back to our, our March numbers and we're you know, waiting for our Q2 numbers here shortly. How much are these markets looking at margins, looking at revenue, looking at steady revenue? Any thoughts on that? Some of the more traditional metrics that people might be applying to these Bitcoin miners? Yeah, I mean, the, the difficulty we've got, and you just highlighted the point there, I mean, the last lot of data we got to go off was was the, was the what we can call quarter one of 2023. So January, February, March, that for some companies, that might be quarter four of their quarter. So for a company like like Hive Blockchain, the first quarter this year was their last quarter of their financial period. 
Um, so we're waiting for the next quarter, which will be April, May, June. And I think most of the miners have gotten to the 15th of August. That's the deadline for them to submit their earnings reports. So we'll see between, I'm going to say, August the 1st and the 15th, we'll see most of these companies start issuing them on a sort of like a, a daily basis. They'll start coming through. Um, I did some analysis on quarter one, and during that analysis there, um, what was interesting was that TerraWolf and Cypher um, had the best uh, margin for uh, mining, so the best mining margin. What, what do I mean by mining margin? I mean that's the, the total revenue achieved through Bitcoin less the electricity cost. And there might be a small amount of direct labor cost in there as well. Some companies split it out. Other companies don't. Um, so what I do then is I look at what the operating costs were. So that's your G&A costs, that's your um, interest costs, financing costs. And I come up then with like an operating margin. And if you look at what the miners achieved in March, most, in fact, no miner made an, an abs, a profit during the first quarter. And, and that's because the Bitcoin price went down. And when the Bitcoin price goes down, these these miners have to show the loss of the Bitcoin value on their um, on their on their uh, revenue statement. But if I look at the cash costs only, then you have the likes of um, Riot Blockchain, who basically mined a coin, uh, a Bitcoin, in quarter one for about fourteen thousand. That was a total cost. And we'll probably see a similar pattern in quarter two as well, because Riot Blockchain, as well as having, uh, they've got a fixed PPA, so their energy cost is fixed. They've got this ability to um, sell energy back to the market. They also get the rewards from being part of the 4CP program. And so during you know these months where um, they're having to curtail, they're still benefiting. And that, 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 um, money coming through is actually reducing their energy energy costs. So they're getting really, really good margins. And they're also a company that, that sort of, for a big company, look at the um look at the GNA costs as well. So um the cash elements. I'm not I'm not suggesting that, you know, they're focusing as much on the um stock compensation. I'd like to see them do that, but they're they're focusing on the on the on the cash costs. So, you know, travel, salaries legal professional fees they've got literally no debt so there's no, not really a, a, any big amount of interest payments to make i don't think they have any interest payments so you know their cost of minor bitcoin from a cash perspective is is probably at the moment the best of all the miners and um, terra wolf has has the best margin but the fact they've got that 114 million dollars of debt their interest payments are about two million dollars a month so over a quarter, that's $6 million of interest payments to, to come off their operating, you know, from, from their operating costs. Um, so their cost, so we're looking at two extremes there. At the moment, TerraWolf's costs are the highest per Bitcoin and Riot's are the lowest per Bitcoin. And then obviously you've got the rest of the miners um, in, in there. C Cypher has a very good, very good um, uh, cost. cost uh, per Clean Spark has a very good cost to mine the whole a whole Bitcoin. Um, Argo Blockchain actually has a, has a, a very good margin, but again, Argo Blockchain have debt. Uh, I think about seventy seven million dollars of debt before their dilution last night, and so their interest payments are about one point one million dollars um, a month, and so that impacts. You know, if you're only mining, I think they mine one hundred thirty four Bitcoin in June. It's, you know, you need to be mining a lot of Bitcoin to sort of like allocate some of that interest cost more Bitcoin. Um, so curtailing is, is not great for Argo blockchain. Um, they did get some, I think they're, they're going to get some payments for curtailing in June. So Galaxy, who now own the site at Elios, they've got a fixed contract in place. They're part of the 4CP program and Argo highlighted in their update that they're going to benefit in some way from, from, from that deal as well. So they'll benefit from having the, the fixed rate when the energy is being used and they'll also benefit a little bit from when they curtail to get some of them credits back as well. So, um, you know, and they are looking to reduce costs. Argo, the one miner out there that I know, are they, I think the first quarter they drove costs down by 70%. So they're looking in the right, as an accountant, they're looking at what I'd be doing, reducing costs. 
And all these miners, even the rights of these miners, they all need to do that even more now for the next 10 months going into the halving. Try and keep things really lean as they're going to that period. Um, ready, ready, you know, because they can't predict what the Bitcoin price is going to do. One last thing I want to go through is Bitcoin production for XAsh before we get to the Twitter questions. This chart is important, especially during the summer months. Uh, this metric, as you know, Anthony, and you put every time mining memo in on uh, the website here of the article, basically looks at how much Bitcoin are you getting per exahash of miners that you put online. Some miners are very efficient and they squeeze a lot of Bitcoin, probably have better miners, better uptime, things like that. And some miners are not as efficient. Now, the asterisk with this, of course, is that it's somewhat of a gameable metric and also that some of these miners play an energy strategy as well. For example, Riot blockchain. So wondering if you can walk that out for the audience before we go to our Twitter questions here in a minute. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, it's, it, it comes as no surprise to see Bitfarms there, you know, in first place. Um, they've been very steady for the last uh, two years uh, that I've been producing these tables. I think there's only been literally one month that they had a blip in one month, but for the other 23, 24 months, they've been in them top top, top two or top three positions um, every month. And, and Bitfarms put their results out first, so they're not having to wait for the miners to see what they've done before they show their results. They'll put their results out on workday one, um, you know, in the morning, and they're there sort of four or five, six days before some of the miners put their results out. So, you know, head, hats off to, uh, to Bitfarms. Iris Energy, again, and Hive, they're two names that, you know, they'll finish in the top top three literally every month. So, you know, discount those three miners. Clean Spark, another one. DMG had a, had a good month from a from a uh, production perspective but actually they had a poor month from production in terms of bitcoin so you know they've got a hash rate of about one x a hash they had to curtail quite significant during the month they had some electricity spikes and so that meant switching off you know for for, for a period of time and so effectively that they only had an operational hash rate of about 700 peta hash so they lost 30 percent of their hash rate on average for the whole month um, so it might look good on this table here, but on the actual Bitcoin produced, um, wasn't a great wasn't a great month for those. And they haven't had any del deliveries recently. They have got some orders coming in. Um, they've got a plan to try and get from one to two exash by the end of the year. But we're now in towards the end of July, and you know uh, we'll start seeing some of these miners maybe drive drive down some of their growth targets. Um, which were maybe aspirational when they came out with them, and DMG might be one of those that that does that. Um, Terra Wolf, um, uh, you know, sort of in that that middle tier group there. Um, you know, constantly, you know, have 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 a uh, you know consistent consistent periods. Bit digital as well. Argo blockchain moved up a few places this month. They they've been hovering in the last sort of two miners over the last twelve months, but they've um, they had a bit of improvement. We're still not hearing anything from Argo um, with regards to the immersion at Helios. So they've had the immersion in place there for over 12 months now, but there hasn't been any updates uh, about the performance of the immersion cooling. So that sort of um, makes you wonder, you know, has that strategy been um, was the best to adopt? Because immersion cooling, it's very expensive to install immersion cooling. Once the miners go into immersion cooling, they're only fit for purpose and for immersion cooling. You're not going to start putting them in air cooled. Can't swap them around once they're immersion cooled miners. That's pretty much it. Then they're immersion cooled. Um, we are hearing that other miners now are looking at, um, at different immersion cooling technology. And uh, I know Fred Teal from Marathon Digital has been quite vocal about what he's going to be doing, you know, and doing at the moment actually, because I think the uh, Abu Dhabi um, agreement that I think their miners are already hashing over there. And so he was quite bullish on the type of immersion cooling technology he's using. So it'll be interesting to see if he can get an update out in the next few months as to how that's happening. But we'll start. We'll probably start seeing some updates in the next month or so from Abu Dhabi, including their normal monthly update, because they've already they've already acknowledged they're starting. They've already started hashing over there. Um, Cipher dropped down a few places this month. Again, it was a curtailment. Um, so. They got paid for some of the curtailment, but really wasn't a significant amount. I think it worked out about 40 Bitcoin extra. It wouldn't have changed their place in the tables. So 
Um, yeah, it's it's sort of same as for three or four of the miners, and then you know a couple of miners switch positions. So you know, better month for Argo, better month for DMG. Um, Riot would have been top. Riot would have outperformed Bit Bombs if we convert that um, that cash they received of ten million and credits into Bitcoin itself. Um, they would have been top of this table and top of the uh, um, the, the other table as well. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Okay, let's go to our last questions. Uh, thank you for putting out this questionnaire on Twitter yesterday uh, at the Mining Pod. If you are a listener and on Twitter or on YouTube on Twitter, go check it out. Give us a follow. Interact with us. We really appreciate it. Anthony, we got a few questions in from listeners. Let's go through those now. If you have them up. So, first question we got from Tim asking, "We'd love to see AP leverage his accounting skills and do an only cost per coin analysis of Q1 and predictions for Q2, just using your power." Uh, I guess that's a pun there. Nice. In Q1, all the miners suffered losses despite some claiming absurdly low cost per coin. What is the actual all-in cost? Yeah, we. I think we've actually sort of covered that question. I think during our discussion, um, I have done a Q1. Um, update on on this and i'm going to be doing um in i think in the next week or so i'll be doing another article um for coindesk around and um, how miners are going into the halving within the article that will show and um, the current costs that some of these miners are are having at the moment so i'm going to try and i'm going to try and extrapolate quarter one into a quarter two position and i'll be able to compare that when the actual quarter results come out in august and see how accurate i was um I'll, I'll use some sensible assumptions, but we've already discussed that you know, right, right, um, platforms have had the sort of like the lowest cost of the mining a coin, and Terra will, because of their interest payments, have the, have the sort of the highest cost per per coin in that first quarter. Now, if they mine more, Terra will mined far more coins in quarter two than it did in quarter one. So some of those operating costs get spread across more coins, and so therefore the cost comes down, and you might find. That a lot more miners in quarter two are close to making, you know, certainly uh, cash flow positive. So what that means is the money coming into the organisation and the costs in cash going out of the organisation, they're not overspending what they're getting in. So you'll, you know, um, there might still be some sort of like you've got to remember these miners, um, you know, have to depreciate the, the the machines, and depreciation is a cost, albeit it's a non-cash cost. So you know, some of these miners might have five, six million dollars of depreciation in a quarter. That's going to, you know, with the Bitcoin price at the moment, that's going to affect all the miners, you know, uh, you know, reaching some sort of profit. But it's a non-cash cost. They're not physically paying any money out of depreciation. So if you look at the cash costs, I think you'll see a lot more miners in quarter two having a cash positive um, cash flow than they, did in, than they did in quarter one. Awesome. Let's go to our second question. Matt asks, do you expect any miners to have a positive EPS in Q2? Um, along, the, uh, uh, along the same lines, uh, it's, it, um, it's, it's, it's going to be down to depreciation. And also the other cost that's included is the um, stock compensation. So stock compensation is given to uh, senior managers, employees of the company to uh, reward them for their making sure that their uh, values and uh, strategies are in line with the values and strategies of the company. And, you know, some of these miners, I've highlighted in articles before, uh, you know, do reward themselves quite well. And it is a cost to the, it is a cost to the company. Again, it's not a cash cost, um, but it is, treated as a, it is treated as a cost in the accounts. So, you know, if you're going to, you know, issue five six seven million of stock compensation a quarter that's a cost now you know there's no cash given out the shares will be issued at some point in time invested for the uh for the individual and effectively as a retail investor your share allocation is actually then becomes a bit smaller because the company effectively diluted to pay this stock compensation so from from an EPS perspective, again, with the Bitcoin price hovering around that sort of late um, 20s for the end of June, I think it's 27,000, 28,000, um, you might not see positive EPS 
But again, from that from a from a cash flow perspective, you'll see a lot of these miners more 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 positively were in quarter one. Awesome. Okay. Last question about acquisitions. Bitcoin mining stock guy asks, what do you think will acquire one core scientific, two Argo blockchain, or three Helios from Galaxy Digital, and any other potential mega mergers out there? Um so from a a mer- an M and A, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, I had had a conversation. This was a discussion point at the AIM Summit in London back in May 2022. So this was as we started to see that Bitcoin price drop in early 2022. Um, I know that um, the Chief Mining Officer of Bit Farms and Chief Mining Officer of Galaxy Digital were two of the panel discussing this. Um, and it was interesting, you know, that they, Amanda from, from Galaxy Digital felt that there was, uh, you know, potentially a significant amount of m and activity could be happening later in the year. Um, we haven't really seen that. We've seen some of the miners going to Chapter 11. So we saw Corn Scientific going to Chapter 11. We saw the likes of um, Stronghold Mining and Argo Blockchain literally avoid Chapter 11 by the skin of the teeth. Um, we've seen, obviously, the likes of Celsius um, and other you know, uh, 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 sort of the bank going to, you know, going to chapter 11. Um, will some of these miners, I think core scientific, I'm still hearing fairly positive things. They've come out with a, a 200 page document now, which explains what they're going to do with all their creditors, issuing them some sort of equity and replacement of the debt. And if those, if those uh, creditors agree to that, then it looks like they'll come out of chapter 11, sort of August or September. They're mining over 30 Bitcoin a day at the moment. So they're doing about 1,000 Bitcoin a month, uh, around about the same level as Marathon Digital. They've got 15 X hash of hash rate and seven over 7 X hash of, of hosted hash rate. So that's 22 X hash of, of, of hash rate on, on their books. Um, they've seen their mar- they've seen their, um, their, their market cap increase by... Um, a thousand percent since January, so the share price has gone up by a thousand percent in that period. Whereas some of these mines we were talking about before have gone up four hundred percent. Well, bear in mind, Core Scientific dropped ninety nine percent in twenty twenty two. So, you know, you've got to you've got to go up a long, long way. They're still probably, um, you know, they still need to probably ten x from here to get back to where they need to be. So it was small steps, but they they they've had a, a big step this year. Argo blockchain. So Argo blockchain sold their Helios site in December to Galaxy Digital and are now the host hosted miner in Helios site. So they've got about two X ash of machines there and they've got about half an X ash um, in Canada at their other site. They're growing the Canada site by a further 300 petahash over the next few months with their Epic machines coming through. Um, for them, it's it's cash runway. So they've got a 35 million loan with Galaxy Digital. When they took it out at 35 million, I think they might have paid some of it back by now. They had a, a dilution last night, which gave them another seven or eight million dollars equivalent. It was just over six million in sterling. So that will help pay some of the debt and pay for some of their operational costs. They've got about 44 Bitcoin. So that's been coming down from about 100 Bitcoin over the last five or six months. So they're spending more Bitcoin than they're mining each month, just just a, a little bit more. And for them, it's all about runway. And if the, if the Bitcoin price goes up, then we won't be having all most of these conversations about the miners because that will alleviate some of the problems. But if the Bitcoin price, um, you know, stays around this 30,000 mark and we don't see any increase, significant increase before the halving. It's how long can Argo hold off? They've had one dilution. They'll probably have to have more dilution to help get some of that debt down. And they're in a, a sort of like a, a vicious cycle. It's, it's you know, the dilution's affecting the share price. So the share price on Monday has it's dropped 70% since Monday. So um, the share price would have to recover for them to have another dilution because they're offering dilutions at discounting rates. Last night was, I think, 25 or 26% discount. Um, which, from a company point of view, getting the revenue is good, but not from a shareholder perspective. So the retail shareholders, their share holding dropped by about 12% last night. The, the, you know, literally the size of their shareholding because the, the company's got more shares. 
Um, but they're going to have to do more dilutions. It's just a case of when. I mean, if we can see the Bitcoin price goes up, everything helps. You know, we've seen the price go from 16,000 in December back to 30,000 now. So that's doubled in value. Um, we need to see another jump again and and get the share prices of these miners up to avoid um, any, any any downside. I'll go, on, I'll go on a runway now. We just don't know how long the runway is. Um, well, they're, they're doing lots of things. They've got a, a you know a CFO with with good credentials. You know, um, last night, you know, for a dilution went went well. It was quick, swift, um, did what it's supposed to do. They even had quite a significant amount of I think ten percent extra revenue from retail investment came in last night and bought some. So there's one big institution, I think, big institutional investor bought some, and then or a big one big um, independent. Purchase a bought, bought a chunk, and then there was about ten percent extra retail. So the retail investors came in last night as well. So um, those are the two that are sort of potential. Um, but then you've got the smaller miners. You know, where do you see DigiHost, um, DMG, um, Bid Digital? Their their market cap as as it's over three hundred million, and I class them as like at the moment they're quite a small miner. They've only got about 1.7x a hatch. So they're sort of a little bit more than DMG and DigiHost in terms of hashing rate, but they, they've they got a market cap sort of four or five times more. So again, it goes back to that question, how the market is valuing these. All three companies have got no debt, so you can't say, well, one of them has got debt. Um, but these smaller ones, are they going to be pickings for for others to come in and do that? I, I don't know. We was, we've been saying this for about you know, 12, 18 months. That, that some of the smaller miners might get in here. But I think at the moment, um, Argo would be the, the sort of like the, the challenge. It's going to be challenging this next 12 months. Um, it's going to be challenging from the fact that, you know, they're, they're mining in Texas. So the, so if you're not mining, you're not paying anything, but you're still paying your staff. So when you're curtailing, you're still having to cover all those operational costs. You might not be paying energy costs, but you're still paying staff wages, all the other stuff that comes out of there. Um, so they, they're in a sort of like catch-22. They want to mine more. They've got immersion, so they should be able to mine more efficiently, maybe even increase the hash rate. And we've not seen any of that. So it's it's about runway. It's how long. So they got $6 million last night. How long was that $6 million going to last with their Bitcoin? Um, and they've got these debts to pay. And Galaxy will probably have all their miners as collateralized against that debt. So the whole of the miners that hosted it at Helios would then pretty much probably fall to, to Galaxy. I, I, I mean, I, I'd expect they have a good relationship. I'm not trying to think that Galaxy have, have, have planned all this and gone in and bought the site and then give them such a rubbish deal that they'll never survive. I think um, there's a lot of... There is competition in the mining sectors, but they're still quite friendly towards each other. They're not competing against each other. That's the thing. You know, they're not trying to outdo each other. They're they're, they're, they're all trying to go for Bitcoin, but it's not. They're not trying to compete against each other. Um, and I've noticed that on social media. You know, a lot of them um, meet up at these seminars and big, you know, big presentations. They know each other quite well. Um, it, they're, they're quite a friend. They're quite a friendly bunch. I met six or seven last year in London and had a really nice time with all of them. So um, it's not dog eat dog out there. It's not look at what we're doing and what they're not doing. Um, so I'd like to think there's a, if the relationship with Galaxy is good, um, you know, Argo, you know, and the Bitcoin price improves, Argo might get through this. The Bitcoin price doesn't improve. It's about runway. How long can they keep maintaining that loan? Yeah, mergers and acquisitions in this space is always interesting because you have to think about not only the balance sheets of both companies, but you also have to think about like the management of each company as well, which they might just want to sell out because they're like they're done with the business and they're on to other things and they're willing to do it, or they might want to stick around. Uh, but I definitely think that some of these smaller companies look potentially as interesting if you want to diversify as a bigger miner. Let's leave the conversation there, though, Anthony. Thank you again so much for your time. Of course, you can find him online on Twitter, Prolific Tweeter. Uh, give him a follow. You can find his tag below on YouTube or in the comments on podcast. Also, go check out the written version of this podcast uh, with all its awesome charts. Anthony, we will see you again next month. Thanks for your time today. Thanks for having me, Will. Have a great day.